Graduation season is here, but it's not without its controversy. While college graduates have been personalizing their stoles and grad caps, often with culturally significant imagery, high schoolers in the Valley aren't always allowed to do the same. But a bill being debated in Nevada right now would allow high schoolers to decorate their graduation regalia, too. Today on CityCast Las Vegas, I sit down with Dr. Sheila Bach. She's a folklorist at UNLV. We talk about why decorated grad caps are so meaningful, what the pitfalls might be, and even how SpongeBob memes can help traditions evolve. It's Monday, April 24th. I'm David Figler, and here's what Las Vegas is talking about. Dr. Sheila Bach, welcome to CityCast Las Vegas. Oh, it's so good to be here. Well, glad to have you, especially as graduation is looming for uh, a lot of people in our valley. I want to ask you, we see a lot of graduates these days with very personalized, adorned caps. And before I ask the reason why grads would want to do this, I want to ask, why do you think that schools or universities or even fellow students might be against their fellow students doing it? Hmm. Okay. Well, that's a good question. Part of the pushback against it is based in the idea that the graduation ceremony or the commencement ceremony is this formal celebratory occasion that is meant to mark achievements, not only for the individual graduates, but for the the community or the the group of graduates as a whole. So oftentimes the the pushback takes the shape of uh, ideas about the value of uniformity, right? Mm -hmm. And the value of the the graduation ceremony as, as being a space where a community of graduates is being performed, not just the individual um, accomplishment. Now, you said uniformity. Mm -hmm. Uh, I hear that sometimes as conformity. Mm -hmm. And since schools are kind of an institution, I guess those go hand in hand sometimes. Yes, it does, right? And one of the things that I've looked at in my research is, you know, when we think about the commencement ritual, right? It is very much the scripted space, right? Where people have very particular ways they're supposed to dress, very particular ways they're supposed to um, move. And, and, you know, there's very particular kind of choreographies within this space or even uses of space in terms of who's allowed to sit where, how long people are allowed to be on the stage. But a lot of times when people enter this space of commencement, they want to use it as a place, um, as an opportunity to bring their whole selves right into this educational setting that um, they haven't necessarily felt that these aspects of themselves have been um, inherently valued, right, by oh, the institution. Yeah. I'm sure there's all sorts of people who are out there uh, who are the first to graduate in their family. And this is Absolutely. even more significant than others. What other sorts of expressions are we talking about on graduation caps that you've noted in your research and studies? So we, we see, um, you know, language integrated into caps. We see images integrated into caps, you know, for example, of family members, friends, you know, um, even pets. Kind of early on in the research, I, I interviewed a student who incorporated the, the, the marigolds that are a really um, important component of the day, the dead celebrations into the design of her cap. So she actually used real marigolds um, in order to commemorate the loss of her grandfather who had passed away the year before. Sometimes these you know, decorations and the, the meanings that they're meant to communicate are very explicit, right? Like one that says like, beware bad ombre with degree, right? So that's like very explicitly kind of a reference to, you know, the, the rhetoric of Donald Trump, right? And this idea of the bad ombre is something that's supposed to be, you know, scary and, and, and threatening. And sometimes it's more implicit, Right. And it's something that is meant to um, 
you know, be meaningful for the individual, but not inherently or as overtly legible to other people who will see it. I mean, have you seen any that are particularly maybe over the top funny or trying to be funny? (laughs) I guess it doesn't always work. I mean, there are so many that are hilarious, right? So what one of my my favorite ones is um, kind of this 3D rendering that um, stands like eight inches tall, right? Six to eight inches tall of the character Patrick, right? From SpongeBob SquarePants. Right? Sure. sure. Um, I won't do my it, impression. I'll save you. But yeah. Oh, no, I would love the to big, hear He's kind of the big Ophi uh, yes. sidekick, right? Yes, right? So there's this kind of like large pink, you know, Patrick on the top of the, the cap and he's holding $3. Right. And this is a reference to a a kind of a popular meme that was circulating around that time. And this was the I have three dollars meme. Are you familiar with it? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, basically um, I'm broke ass poor. (laughs) Like this is all I got. Yeah. Yes. Right. And so, I mean, it was this. You know, wonderful cap um, that was hilarious for. I could see so that for a grad reasons. student for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this was an undergrad, so you know, we'll do it that way you will. But I mean, that was a theme that I saw in a lot of the, the caps, right? Of right. Um, excessive debt, right? Financial hardship. Yeah. Um, you know, but oftentimes these kind of very serious ideas, right, and very serious concerns were being. Um, communicated kind of th- through this lens of humor. For a lot of the people who decorate their caps, it's not always to communicate something so, you know, capital M meaningful, right? Um, you know, oftentimes they're, they're just meant to be, you know, silly, playful. But celebratory. I, celebratory, you know, but I find, you know, if, if we're seeing these patterns, right, across several graduates, across many graduates, across many institutions, it's telling us something. There's a there there that that's worth looking into a little bit more. Well, I, I guess I have to take the bait. Um, what What is the, the meaning then? What do you think is there? Yeah. And so, you know, first thinking about the practicality of it, right? So a lot of people have brought that up as one of the reasons why they've chosen to decorate their caps, right? Because they, they want to stand out in the crowd in some way. You know, for the individual, they become these sites of personal expression, right? So people literally approach their caps as this blank canvas that they can kind of put their own stamp on. <laughs> At the same time, you know, these caps are very much in conversation with these more widely circulating attitudes about what it means to get a college education, right? And what's valuable about it. And so I am really interested in how kind of this personal and the larger than personal are in conversation with each other and how that takes shape in these caps in this particular moment that has kind of heightened cultural significance. I really do appreciate the cultural stuff, especially with certain groups that uh, might consider themselves to have been marginalized, as you describe in in the bigger academic setting, like, what about me? What about these things? But I'm wondering if people are taking this opportunity, especially in the present day, to express themselves politically, which is interesting, but it also seems to maybe open the door for more controversial or harmful expression that could be on grad caps or regalia too. Uh, So I guess the question is, do schools need to develop exclusion lists for things like, I don't know, hate speech or too controversial political opinions on graduation outfits? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a, a really good question. You know, I think that there might be. One of the things that I actually found really surprising, right, is when I um, I kind of really started delving into grad caps in 2016. And I was very much expecting there to be a lot more overtly direct references to the 2016 presidential election, right? You know, that there's some but I was really surprised to find that folks were were not doing that, at least in, in the examples that I found, or not nearly as much as I was anticipating, given how 
strong people's feelings were right in relation to to that election. So I get the feeling that a lot of the times, you know, people will use their cap to communicate very political messaging, right? But oftentimes those political messages are also communicated kind of in relation to people's own perspectives on what's the goal of this event. Mm, so mm-hmm. I just want to give one example of somebody that I interviewed, I believe in 2017. She is a, an immigrant rights activist, and she had decorated her cap with the word, love has no borders, right? So it was a very beautifully decorated cap that she had decorated herself. You know, she said, you know, very early on, if you had asked me about six months ago, I was completely ready to put on my cap, fuck ice. And she had plans. She was talking to family members or her sister about lighting it up to, right, to really have it stand out. And then, you know, as it came closer to, to graduation, she decided not to do that uh, for, for various reasons, right? So one reason was, like, her mom wouldn't like it. But, you know, she said... You know what, though, my mom eventually would have gotten over that because my mom knows me, right? And and, right. and, and you, know, um, <laughs> you know, she would have been okay with it. But she went on to explain how this was a day where she was that it was really about her accomplishment. And as she was thinking about it, she found that if she were to put that message "fuck ice" on there, it would kind of be taking away from her good feelings about the day. Yeah. Um, so and really so, self-regulating there. Yeah. But to answer your question as well, I mean, I, I do anticipate it's very possible, right? Like as we see like, you know, wholly problematic things, right? Like, you know, swastikas or, or slurs or, or things along those lines, right? I mean, I think that there will need to be, you know, hard and fast rules to, to say that, that this is not a space where, where that's acceptable. Yeah, especially as it becomes more common. And and I think that high schools are kind of the last on the bandwagon. It, it Traditionally, especially here in Nevada, there's been a lot of pushback um, that high school kids just don't get the opportunity to do that. I know there's a bill right now in the Nevada legislature that's being tossed about a little bit. It's uh, AB 73. Are you familiar with that one? I am, yes. And if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it does allow for high school and college students to have the ability to uh, adorn their regalia, whether it be cap or gown, as it relates to maybe indigenous culture or religion or other culture, as long as it's sort of approved ahead of time. Is that the basic concept? Yes. Yeah. I think it focuses primarily on um, types of adornment that have religious or cultural significance. And we've seen petitions and protests mm-hmm. by high school students saying, you know, we want to be able to express ourselves. Do you, do you think that high schools should loosen up a little bit when it comes to the same sort of expressions that we see in in the college space? Not just on caps, but maybe even whole graduation outfits. Mm. I mean, I would say yes, because oftentimes, you know, the the idea that's put forward is that, you know, that, that there's a kind of a sanctity to the tradition, right, of the, the uniform graduation dress. But, you know, anyone who really studies tradition knows that, you know, tradition is something that kind of is manufactured. So not everything has happened from time immemorial, right? So tradition is an interpretation of the past and the present, right? And when we label something as traditional, we're making kind of a rhetorical gesture towards it. And so, you know, when you're doing that, oftentimes, you know, not always, but often that rhetorical gesture is meant to create boundaries around something, right? And often that will be more inclusive of some communities than others. You know, at the same time, you know, anyone who pays close attention to tradition knows that in order for it to be sustainable and viable, it needs to adapt. Like traditions are very rarely Um, look exactly the same, you know, over the course of time. They adapt according to the the, the people who are engaging in them, and they need to be responsive to the needs of the the folks who are engaging in the traditional practices. So I think that if there is a 
a desire, right, amongst the graduates, right, to communicate um, and make visible different aspects of themselves. I think it really behooves the the people in charge to take that desire very seriously. But I'm wondering, is there a point at which the personalization of graduation wear just goes too far? Potentially. What are some examples that you're thinking of when you think too far? Well, where it just becomes chaos, like uh, college grads who are advertising only f- their OnlyFans account on the top of their uh, their cap, or uh, you know, maybe even uh, unfortunate political back and forth. Someone might have a BLM on theirs, and someone sees that, and next to them, they decide to you know, woke people suck or something like that, and it just becomes a little confrontational. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my mind goes to dark places. <laughs> sure. No. And I mean, I, you know, I don't blame you. Right. I mean, you've been living, you know, for in this country for the last, you know, several years. Right. So uh, I try um, to be sleepwalking through it. But yeah, no, it's <laughs> yeah. it's hard not to. Yeah. I get yeah. It. And, you know, I haven't seen those types of conflicts. It's not to say that they will not happen, but. That's not something that has emerged in the research that I've done so far. And this is something, and this is a tradition that's been around for a pretty long time. As high schools and universities are preparing for graduations in the coming weeks, what do personalized graduation regalia do for the graduation ceremony, in your opinion? Oh, that's a good question. So for me, I really see it as functioning very similarly, um, and uh, you know, stay with me here on this connection because, you know, I promise it's going to make sense. But I'm along for the ride. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, you know, when you think back on these, you know, medieval ecclesiastical texts, right, that, that were written in the, you know, the 12th to 15th century, right? If you look at them, you know, they were written by, you know, scribes, people who would write in them. And what's wonderful about them is the people who would write these kind of very kind of sacred texts, they would draw all kinds of marginalia um, in the margins, right? And they would um, draw these pictures that were very much kind of subversive and kind of pushing back against the, the sanctity of the text, but it became a part of the text. And for a really long time, you know, people who would study these texts would look at the that marginalia, right? These these pictures and and these things that, that would be in the margin, and they would say, "Oh, it doesn't really matter. They're they're just trivial. It's it's kind of secondary to the real point of the text." And you know, there have since been medieval historians who have looked at that and said, "No, these are actually tells us a lot about how people were engaging with this text at the time, right?" And so I think that, you know, we can liken people decorating their caps to the, those folks who would, you know, inscribe this subversive marginalia, right, into the sacred text uh, of, of these medieval ecclesiastical texts in that they are um, kind of putting their own stamp, their own interpretation on it, right? They're, they're, they're disrupting um, the irreverence that they're supposed to have with it. Right, without completely upending it, right? They're still writing kind of what they're supposed to in the text itself. And so, I mean, I think that that is really valuable, right? The, um, the vandals will have their revenge on history yet. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, I love you know, that. and I, I'm a folklorist, right? And so that means that, you know, I'm really um, compelled by the creative ways that the people use these often like trivialized forms of expression to create and communicate meanings in their lives, right? And I think that these decorated mortar boards are such perfect examples of something that is so quote unquote trivial, but that really can tell us a lot, right? About people's experiences with and perspectives on the value of higher education. And I think that that, those are really big conversations, important conversations that that are taking shape in these trivial forms. Yeah. And if the vehicle has to be SpongeBob SquarePants, so be it. Yeah. I think the vehicle has to be SpongeBob SquarePants. That's the thing, right? So, yeah. 
Well, Dr. Sheila Bach, thanks so much for joining us on CityCast Las Vegas. Thank you. This has been so fun. Before you go, a little news you should know. As the near-record snowpack melts off, the reservoir is expected to rise by 22 feet by the end of the year. The projected runoff will enable the Bureau of Reclamation to release more water than they initially planned for, more than 2.5 million acre-feet of water. Go Lake Mead! And meanwhile, the Nevada Cannabis Association says the industry's budding success may lose some of its momentum because of state and federal obstacles. These include illegal and unlicensed businesses that deliver to the Strip but don't work with legal dispensaries. As these issues continue and the state gets more experience with the legal marijuana industry, continued tweaks and adjustments seem to be the rule and not the exception. That's all for today here on CityCast Las Vegas. If you or someone you know is decorating a grab cap this year, post a pic online and tag us. We're at CityCast Vegas on Twitter and Instagram. And if you enjoyed the show, go tell a friend. Then rate the show, leave us a review, and subscribe to our brilliant morning newsletter. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Take care. One of my favorite caps that I've seen, it was from a, a graduate, um, I believe at, at Western Kentucky University, a colleague of mine sent a picture of it. And it just had this ripped piece of lined paper, right, that was, you know, like taped on and it, you know, it was, you know, extending beyond the lines of the cap. And in like, in just a Sharpie crudely written, it said last minute, like everything else in college. Right. And this was going to be, um, you know, yeah, it was... that took me half a second, but yeah, that's pretty good. That's a good one.